Hi, my name is Brenda Titus and welcome to my video series, My Year Recovering from Retinal Detachment. This is the fifth video in the series and today we will be talking about face down recovery. If you haven't seen my prior videos, I definitely recommend that you check those out first. And uh, as a reminder, this is my personal experience and in no way is to take the place of medical intervention. So a little bit about what happens when you have a retinal detachment. There's most commonly going to be a surgery. It's called a vitrectomy. And I will leave links down below about what is a retinal detachment, what is a vitrectomy, and I will add some information as well for what is face down recovery. So it'll give actually the clinical information. My understanding is that during a retinal detachment surgery, they they need to insert ga a gas bubble into your eye. And that gas bubble, the whole point of it is to kind of lift everything up, see my hands, kind of like when you're going to glue something and you need it to be held in place for a while before you just, you know, let it go so it doesn't, you know, slide or separate. So that is kind of the philosophy around face down recovery is that they want your body to assist the bubble in pushing everything up together. So that's the very simple explanation around face down recovery. What I want you to know is actually the rest of it, which is literally it means that for usually the first week after surgery, you're going to spend as much time as possible. I think they say 50 minutes on 10 minutes off. So 50 minutes of every hour with the head positioned downward. Now, occasionally, I just showed you that. Uh, occasionally somebody might not have to do that, especially it depends on where the, the detachment is. So it might be possible that uh that that the the bubble would be sitting in a you know sitting in an upright position the bubble is pushing up this way but it seems to be that based on gravity the 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 very common thing is that people are going to have to be in a downward position now if you saw one of my earlier videos this was my realization of when I realized, oh my gosh, I might have a retinal detachment because I had remembered that I had a family member who'd had to do this face down recovery. And I thought to myself, oh my gosh, there's no way that I could do this. Well, guess what? I did. I did. So if I can do it, uh, I, I believe I'm here to, to help share some tips so that, so that other people can do it too. So some of the common concerns and obviously some of the ones that I had as well, I've learned from message boards and things like that because I researched it right away to see what I could do to prepare. So uh, a very common concern right away is, oh my gosh, I'm going to spend an entire week just laying there. And yes, it's true. We are going to spend the first week basically just laying or sitting. And that is a very important part of the initial stage of, of this surgery recovery. Uh, the next thing, well, how do I keep my brain active and engaged during that time? Well, of course, there's audio books, podcasts, TV, it did occur to me as I was preparing, and I'm glad I thought about it this way, that I um, it, I, I knew that, you know, moving my eyes wasn't, wasn't going to be comfortable, so physically reading would be hard. I also know that for myself, uh, you know, maybe if I start drifting off during an audiobook, so I'm not actually a big fan personally of, of audiobooks. Other people, I highly recommend it. Uh, I did think that podcasts, especially that would be telling a story, telling a you know rich kind of episodic story, is a little bit more my my style. And uh, also, it occurred to me, and and I stand by this, that actually to be watching something on TV. We want to have it be something that isn't a lot of action, a lot of, you know, really keeping track of visuals because there truly will only be one eye that is working during the time after the procedure. The other eye is going to be in recovery mode. So just something, you know, to be thinking about as you're thinking about what you could, 
you know, what show you'd like to catch up on or what movies you'd like to watch. Um, okay. So the next common concern is about, uh, oh my gosh, am I doing this right? Am I, what, what if I mess up? Now, I felt pretty confident in my, my, what I was doing throughout, but I have actually talked to other people who got very concerned, very emotionally distressed about making a mistake and then, you know, destroying their outcomes. And the truth is, is that is a valid concern because I have actually heard from other people or about other people kind of in friends of friends or what have you, who uh, did not follow the instructions as carefully as, as possible or just weren't able to. And, um, and they, they did have to do some of it again. So definitely want to do as best as we can, but also staying calm about it as well. Let's see. Uh, it is a very uncomfortable position. So that is, you know, there, there's a truth in that. And I would say, you know, because I, I personally have back and neck issues as well. And so I was very concerned about this. And so I did a lot to research and prepare for that. Of course, some additional challenges, you know, plenty of people, you know, if you're a side sleeper, if you're a back sleeper, you know, that that is going to play into, you know, making sure that you're able to find a, a comfortable position to be able to not just spend the, you know, the all day, but also all night. And at the same time, being able to get as much rest as you can, because rest is very important as you're recovering from surgery. So, um, I actually found, and I'm going to talk about, uh, some of the tools that I used for this, but I also found in the midst of this, you know, like when we're laying on our, our, laying on our front, um, you know, having breasts or belly that can, you know, kind of make it a little complicated. And some of the things that I was using to prop myself up, I ended up really pushing in on my chin. And, uh, and so I did end up having some, some kind of chin and neck challenges and jaw clenching challenges as well. So things that, that I want to share, share with you. So I did find some uh, things that I had researched that I wanted to share and just share some of my experiences with uh, some of these recommendations to help with your face down recovery. Now, the first is uh, I had seen um, a recommendation to get a massage chair. So with a massage chair then, or a tattoo chair, it's also called that. So it's, it's, you know, I found one on Amazon for maybe $75, $80. And so you're sitting in a position, but the head again is down. So it actually has a cushion that, that you put your head down in. Now for me, that ended up, you know, I did purchase it. I didn't use it as much as I thought I might use it. And that more was just my, my physical ability to maneuver myself into that position. So the, the truth is, is that, you know, for um, especially people who might be older or weaker, uh, that could be, which which is a, a common thing. Uh, people tend to be a bit on the older side uh, when facing retinal detachment, uh, maybe not as much, you know, leg strength and what have you. So that is something to take into consideration, the, the awkwardness of, of, of the massage or tattoo chair. So the other recommendation that I got was a massage bed. Now I do have a massage bed. And so uh, we, we pulled that out. We got it all ready. I did add some cushioning to make it softer as well. And um, that, that really was the, the best option for me, actually. Um, I have kind of two options I'm going to share, but the massage table actually was, was very helpful for me. Uh, some of the other things that I found, I did find something that was a mirror. It was it was pretty cool, um, but it it didn't quite work for how my my mind was thinking about things. And so the mirror, you kind of you know as you're looking down, it would angle forward, and so it would help if you were you know walking around. Uh, a place where you wanted to be sure you didn't bump into anything. 
uh, since I was at home this entire time and I was able to use my phone literally as my TV right in front of my face. Oh, that is another part I forgot. I'll mention that in a second. Um, so, so, but they do kind of, they were recommending that because then you can be looking down and it'll angle towards you to be able to look at the TV or to other people that you're talking to. Now for me, I wasn't talking to anybody. You know, if I was talking to my husband, he and I were fine. We could, we could manage that. Uh, the TV, like I said, I was using my phone, uh, or my iPad right in front of my face. And so I, you know, I, I, I I watched a couple of football games. It was during playoffs, and so I watched a couple of those with the mirror. But it was just kind of a. It was kind of weird with how it, you know, made me kind of have awareness of the world around me. I could see where it could be helpful to be able to walk around, maneuver around the home, especially if there were more people, or especially you know, children or dogs that we needed to really be careful about. I've lived in my home for quite some time, so I felt pretty comfortable being, being able to maneuver around without the mirror, without being able to see very well during that time. There is another uh, thing that is available, and it's a, 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 a cushion that it's like a table rest. And so you literally just put it on the table, and it's kind of a, a almost like a piece of the massage table table or a piece of the massage chair and it's literally just the face cushion so that is you know kind of another option and that would be something really for just being able to sit on a chair since I had decided on the massage table and another option that I'm going to share I didn't you know really bother with anything like that so the next two things actually were pretty much beyond the massage table the most helpful thing for me so I did buy a uh, a travel pillow and it, you blow it up and it's the kind of travel pillow where people, you, you kind of, you're leaning forward into it. There's a hole for your face and so you're leaning forward into it and so you're in a face down position. And uh, that actually was, was pretty helpful for me, especially during the drives to the doctors and um, sometimes when we were sitting and preparing for a meal. So that was helpful and um, I might leave a link down down in the comments or what have you. I don't have any affiliate link or anything. It's just something that was helpful for me. The other one, I did have another really, really good pillow. And I definitely want to see if I can find this one to add in the links below. It was more of a full a half body pillow. So you could rest your um, your upper body on it and it would prop up a little bit and then it provided a, a, a place for the face to go and that one was very helpful. I laid it down on the floor with some some blankets and uh, and and it would you know you could kind of make it harder or softer as as you needed and um, that one actually was probably the the best thing for me the the massage table in addition it was kind of like I'd go back and forth between the two because it was a little bit softer but it wasn't a room that wasn't my usual bedroom and so I would kind of use that during the day the massage table at night um, there is available, I did find a, a company that does rental equipment. If you search for um, face down recovery equipment and there are other conditions actually that require a much longer time doing face down recovery. So uh, since I had the massage table and I was decided to just buy the other things, I didn't, I didn't do the rental equipment but it is something that, that you could look into. I just had decided on other things, but I think in the, in the, uh, rental equipment, there's the, um, the, the table face rest, there's a, the massage chair and a couple of other things that are, that are kind of included in that. And it just kind of worked out for me that it made more sense to buy the, the chair and buy the other things than to do that rental. But it is definitely a, you know, a, a neat option and maybe even a little bit more earth friendly. Uh, let's see. The other thing that I would recommend preparing for yourself for face down recovery is heating pads, 
and ice packs. So this does definitely do a number on the back, neck, and shoulders. And so actually in the other thing, I use a roll-on like a neck pain pain medicine so to roll it on to make it really easy so there are different philosophies about when you would use heat and when you would use cold I'm not going to get involved in that I definitely knew for myself there were different times that I would need one versus the other and so um, so I definitely recommend you know making sure that you have some of those things I did ask my husband about any input or advice that he had or things that he remembered and so one of the things actually that he mentioned, you know, we, we did have kind of a learning curve through the process. And one of the things that he reminded me is that, you know, when somebody's kind of, you know, walking like this and their face is down, um, that is a, a universal sign uh, for uh, lack of confidence, maybe depression, feeling down in the dumps. And uh, and so he he did say, it was hard for him to see me like that, you know, I mean, that was sweet. And, uh, and, and it, especially because it is true, you know, when you take on that physical, uh, positioning, it can kind of feel that way too. And I was feeling down in the dump. So it was, it was kind of accurate. I was definitely happy to be able to have my face up and, um, be, be able to engage, be able to, you know, look at him and, and all of those things. But, but that is something just to kind of be, be aware of. I did really feel that um, I did a lot of research and preparation, and uh, so because of that, I felt like my face down week was very successful. I was very happy that it was over, though. So of course, of course, I think anybody would be. Um, a couple of additional things when I mentioned the learning curve is uh, figuring out how to eat with your face down. Now, technically, they do say that you can take a little bit of a break, but they really do want you doing this consistently. So when I had my morning coffee, I tried to have it with a straw, and then I realized that I use reusable metal straws. Those are very hot. So that was that didn't work out so well. So I did probably have iced coffee during that. It is also important to think about food that is easy to get into your mouth as well. And so, um, you know, soup, while we think of soup as, you know, comforting and warming and all of those things, that was a little bit more complicated uh, uh, to, to navigate. So those are just kind of some things that, that I wanted to, to think about and share. I'm going to double check my notes here. I got through them all. But like I said, we did, you know, we did make it. It is possible. I hope that the information I've provided here might be able to, to help you or a loved one if you're preparing to do face down recovery. Like I said, this is something that, that is really common for retinal detachment surgery. And I believe some other things that have to do with macular degeneration as well. So uh, hopefully if, if uh, people find me, that are interested or, or need to do this face down recovery, then I hope that this information was helpful for you. And like I said, I will add a couple of those links for the um, the pillows just because they were pretty unique and, and very, very helpful for me. And so I will add those in, in the, uh, probably in the comments section. And uh, so with that, I hope that you have a wonderful day. Thank you for hearing what I've had to share and hopefully it was helpful for you. In the next Next video I will be talking about that early recovery stage so probably thinking about you know the, the face down week as well as probably the first couple of weeks or so so with that I wish you a wonderful day thank you so much for being here